The new Ryzen 5 2400G processor and its slim down sibling, the Ryzen 3 2200G processor, both feature Vega graphics. Onboard graphics chips which AMD claim are powerful enough to run esports games and other less graphically demanding games. It's a tall order for these really small processors, so let's see if they're up to the task. First off, let's discuss what these chips are and why they're a little different from your usual CPU. AMD calls the Ryzen 5 2400G and Ryzen 3 2200G APUs, which stands for Accelerated Processing Unit. It's just AMD's term for a processor with an integrated graphics chip. These new APUs feature high-performing graphics chips based on AMD's proprietary graphics architecture, the same tech powering its latest Radeon Vega graphics cards. It's not exactly the same. For instance, you can't expect these APUs to deliver the same level of performance you'd get out of a discrete graphics card, but AMD claims they'll give you just enough power to get through some less demanding games. Unfortunately, the Ryzen 5 2400G and Ryzen 3 2200G are outclassed in raw compute performance by less expensive processors. On Geekbench, the Ryzen 5 2400G kept pace with the Ryzen 5 1400 and Ryzen 3 1300X, and Intel's most recent i3-8100, all of which are less expensive than the Ryzen 5 2400G's $169 sticker price. We saw similar results in our 4K video encode test, with the Ryzen 5 2400G taking about 11 and a half minutes to finish an encode that the i3-8100 only took about 11 minutes to encode. As a processor, the Ryzen 5 2400G does okay. It doesn't overpower processors in its price range, and more often than not, underperforms them by a fair margin. The Ryzen 5 2400G is designed for gaming, and on that front, it does fairly well as long as you keep things on their lowest settings and never step above a 1080p resolution. In Overwatch, for instance, with the render scale set to 100% on a low graphics preset, we managed a reliable 35 FPS average. Though performance does take a hit here and there when there's a lot going on, it's never bad enough to make the game unplayable. Similarly, Civilization VI on low settings at 1080p saw a reliable 30 FPS on average, with the occasional dip to 25 FPS. Rocket League was also a strong performer, hitting an average around 41 FPS with all the settings tuned for performance, and around 25 FPS with all the settings tuned for quality. For onboard graphics, that's not bad. We usually see Intel HD laptops come in well below these numbers. To be fair though, even a lower end discrete graphics card would run circles around the Ryzen 5 2400G. For instance, in 3D Mark, the 1050 Ti more than triples the Ryzen 5 2400G score on the Fire Strike benchmark. Moving on to the Ryzen 3 2200G, it's a little bit less impressive. It came in at about half the Ryzen 5's FPS figures, hitting a solid 18 FPS on Overwatch at low settings and around 15 FPS in Civilization VI. All right, should you buy one of these? The Ryzen 3 2200G is cheap, coming at $99, but it's an underwhelming performer across the board and spending an extra $20 gets you an 8th generation i3 processor, so it's not exactly a compelling buy. But if you want to build a gaming PC from scratch with current GPU prices the way they are, the Ryzen 5 2400G isn't a bad buy. It offers just enough gaming performance for the occasional Overwatch or Rocket League match while you wait for GPU prices to come down. On its own though, as a processor for a workstation, it's not really worth the extra cash.